Hi everyone, welcome back to our Cloud Development Environment 101 series. In the last video, we covered the basics of what CDEs are and the advantages they provide. In this installment, we'll focus on the developer experience when using a CDE. We'll use Coder in all the technical examples in this video, but any CDE will provide a similar experience. So let's get started. In this scenario, I'll act as a new user named Day1, who has just started and is assigned to work on both Project A and Project B. The CDE admins have created my account and assigned me to the appropriate groups for my role. Note that when I log in, there isn't much here. I don't have any workspaces, but I do have the option to create a workspace and there's a template for Project A and another for Project B. I'll select Project A, give it a name, and create my workspace. We'll see a little output go by and after a few seconds, my workspace is up and running. Let's take a look at the startup log. You can see that it's installing some software at runtime and it's syncing up our project source code. This is a very basic workspace. I have an option to use VS Code Desktop, a web-based implementation of VS Code, and finally a terminal. Even if you're not a CLI junkie, it's always handy to have terminal access to your workspace. Let's take a look at using the desktop IDE. Once we click on it, it opens my already installed VS Code, installs the Coder plugin, and is now connecting to the workspace via a remote SSH. This flow is specific to Coder, but a common practice in the CDE space. Basically, the plugin allows you to directly connect to the workspace, which is proxied behind the control plane. In other words, the workspace isn't directly exposed to the internet. You need the plugin to broker the connection with the control plane, and the control plane will connect you to the workspace. If we look at the terminal in VS Code, we can use hostname and uname to see that we are in fact working on the remote workspace rather than our laptop. And we can look at what files are there. Our project source code is already synced. At this point, I could start coding and committing. The onboarding experience is that quick and that easy with a CDE. Let's make one change to our source code just to set up our next example. This is one of the coolest things about CDEs. Everything stays on the workspace. So, if you get a new laptop or are working from a different device, you don't have to worry about setting anything up. So what if you didn't have that particular IDE installed? Or for example, imagine you left your laptop at the office and only had a tablet at home. You can go back into the workspace and use the browser-based version if it's available. Another cool thing about CDEs is they can turn any device into a powerful development machine. Here we are on a basic tablet. Let's open our browser and log in. It's the same web UI that we used on our laptop. We can do anything here that we can do on our laptop with the exception of using a local IDE. Let's go into our Project A workspace and open the web-based IDE. This is Code Server, a web-based implementation of VS Code. It's another open source project from the Coder team that is free to use in any CDE. You don't need to use Code Server, of course, as any web-based IDE should work. As you can see, this all looks very familiar. There's our file tree. There's the file we added in the previous example, and we can open a terminal and see that we're working on the workspace, not the device. But web-based IDEs aren't just for mobile devices. They're especially handy when working on multiple projects. Let's jump back to our laptop and see that workflow. Remember our new user, Day1, is assigned to both Project A and Project B. So how will that work? Let's go back to the Workspaces tab and create a new workspace. Select Project B and give it a name. Now we have two distinct workspaces set up, one for each project. We can have both open at the same time and switch between projects with zero retooling. If we look at the Project B workspace UI, it looks really familiar. So what is different? If we look at the workspace itself, we can see our shell prompt looks a little different and our source code tree is named Project B. Since this is a fully functional IDE and each workspace has its own extensions, let's install a different theme on this workspace to visually separate them. But there is one big difference with Project B. It's a completely different operating system underneath the workspace. This is a major difference for sure, but not out of the realm of possibility if you're dealing with multiple customers with drastically different requirements. If you are dealing only with internal customers, most differences between workspaces will be subtle, maybe a different version of a tool or a core library. But this example shows that you can have a consistent developer experience, even if their workspaces are radically different underneath. And that's it. Those are the basics of using a workspace. Technical onboarding is accomplished with a few clicks. 
Time to first commit is reduced to minutes. Each workspace is a separate entity with its own file system and configurations, and developer experience is consistent no matter what the tooling. Thanks for checking out this video. If you have any questions, please leave us a comment below. Also, have a look at coder.com for an overview of Coder's Enterprise Ready CDE, and check out our GitHub page, github.com coder, to stay up to date with our projects, roadmap, and latest releases. Also, keep an eye on this space for our next video on the differences between a CDE and an IDE.